Hey everybody, and welcome to another Interstellar Modeler. It's now time to show the final completed Hasbro Hero X-Wing. All right guys, well it's time to reveal the final X-Wing here, so I'm gonna go ahead and unveil it here for you. All right, again, this is a conversion of the Hero series X-Wing by Hasbro, and it measures about 30 inches from front to back. Uh, it is a approximately 1 1 18th scale ship, and um, you can see that uh, it uh, from these previous pictures, let me just show you what the pictures look like here prior to this conversion. All right, so as you know, the uh, toy is pretty simple. It comes with stickers for the hull markings. Uh, you've got cannons that snap on pretty easily, the wings snap on easily. So really within minutes, you have a, a nice affordable toy that you can play with. So obviously, there are pretty big shortcomings uh, for the toy. Uh, you've got gaps along the engines. Uh, there's no detailing on the underside of the wings. Um, you have a forward landing gear, but none uh, towards the back, which is a shame. Uh, you've got gaps also along the cannons. And uh, so, you know, it's, a, it's a, a toy that no doubt is made to play with, but, you know, if you want to turn this into something that uh, is a bit more than that, uh, you know it's going to take a little bit of work. But even with those shortcomings, the one thing that you do notice that easily starts to get you going here with uh, uh, seeing the potential that you can uh, create something a bit more special here is really the surface detailing, especially here that you see along the hull, the panel lines that they did include, uh, the detailing along the engine area, uh, really isn't all that bad. So, uh, you know, you start to look at something like this and you know with uh, some extra effort you can really make this into something special. But I can tell you that one of the things I do enjoy about these projects is that it really presents uh, different challenges than typical model building. Uh, you've got, like I said, these shortcomings that I pointed out there with the toy. Um, and, of course, you have the, the, the painting and the detailing. But there's certain problems you have to solve, and uh, there are no instructions. You know, the only thing you have is your imagination. So it's really one of the things I enjoy about uh, tackling a project like this. Now, if you look online, you're going to find some uh, builds that uh, people have done with this toy that are just absolutely mind-blowing, if you ask me. They made extensive modifications. There's this one guy you can find on Replica Props form, I believe, uh, who actually was able to convert this into the X configuration. Uh, that did include some heavy modifications. Uh, he created some wooden braces, for example, that he put all along the interior or the backside there that had inserts for the wings to slide into. Um, so, you know, you can pretty much, uh, you know, the sky's the limit. You can go all out on something like this. My intention here, again, was to create something just to stay in the closed configuration and to keep it fairly simple in that regard, but to really work at weathering the ship, painting it, and uh, making some modifications that I could make here uh, with the cannons and, and some of those open gaps and so forth. Now, one modification I was particularly happy with is the one that I had to make here for the Ford cannon. So let me just show you the original picture. So as you can see in that picture, what was missing were these C-shaped uh, pieces here. Uh, the uh, cannons just really didn't look very good, so I knew I had to fix that. And uh, what came to mind was to find some sort of tube that I could cut to create this piece. So I just went over to Home Depot and, uh, you know, just by stroke of luck, I came across this toilet paper roll holder that I knew would fit the bill. So uh, you can see here, it worked out pretty good and uh, it was a pretty cheap modification to make. Now, before I turn on the lights, I wanted to show you the underside of the ship. Uh, again, these are some of the modifications I had to make here with the wings and to the engine. So with the wings, we had to fill in this entire area. Uh, again, that was done with uh, sheets of styrene. Uh, I was able to cut it into the proper shape and uh, use a scribing tool along with other strips of styrene there uh, to create the detailing that resembles the opposite or the upper side of the wing there. Um, along here, the engines had to be filled in. Again, using uh, sheets of styrene along with uh, styrene rods and um, and strips there were able to create the detailing there to fill in all those gaps. Um, what's really helps, uh, or what really helps here is the uh, pastels that really help to hide some of those or blend in these modifications. Um, you know, the one thing that I love about Star Wars models is they always tend to be weathered and worn, so it's always fun to uh, to add this type of detailing. One other thing was the battery compartment. Again, I wanted to uh, create a ship that was uh, powered from uh, within, so you didn't have to have an external power source. 
So we had to find a way to hide that battery. So this, of course, was the largest area, seemed the most logical to me, and you can hide it pretty well. So I had to create a uh, covering here. Again, this was made with a uh, styrene sheet, and uh, using strips of styrene, we're able to create some of the outer detail. But um, what's really cool about these days, you know, you have all kinds of things available to you, including these neodymium magnets that are pretty effective with um, helping to keep everything in place there. I was able to uh, glue in some metal strips here, and uh, so you can easily have access to that battery compartment, and it blends in pretty well. Uh, able to conceal our switches. Uh, again, we have two switches here, one that will turn on the anterior lights and the other one to turn on the engines. Now, I wanted to show you an X-Wing that I built a number of years ago. This is the old MPC kit, and as I pull away here, you can see uh, the difference in scale. All right, so you can see the lights are looking pretty good here. First of all, the anterior lights were done with uh, chip size SMD lights from modeltrainsoftware.com. Um, again, they are available pre-wired with the appropriate resistor uh, that you need for whatever battery source that you're using. In this case, we're using a 9-volt battery, so it came already pre-wired with those. The little figure that you see there is... Um, a figure I got at uh, Comic Con this year. He's about a three inch or so, three and a half inch figure there of an X Wing pilot. And finally, let's get over here to the back just to show you the engines now. Now the color of the engines is actually a pink color, they're just not showing up properly here with the video camera. Uh, but they've been tinted a pink color, I basically used to me as clear red, just one single coat, and it gives off a pink coloration just like what we, uh, at least I'm trying to match the look that we saw on screen. And the LEDs I'm using here are just 3 millimeter uh, cool white LEDs, again they were tinted with to me a red, and they uh, um, are flickering LEDs, so uh, uh, they come already pre-wired to do this. Alright guys, well that pretty much wraps it up for this one. There was a lot of interest in people following along this build, so um, I was really happy to see that. Uh, always happy to answer any questions that you guys might have. Uh, again, these are just fun projects to do. It gives you a break from uh, your typical type of model building, but again, utilizing much of the same detailing skills that you use for any of those kits. So uh, again, a great way to customize some of these toys that are coming out. There's more due to come out because of the movies that are they're now producing. Uh, again, as you know, we have Rogue One just around the corner here in December, and who knows what kind of toys they're going to they're gonna produce for that one. I've seen a number of conversions of the toys that were made for The Force Awakens. So again, just fun projects you can take on, and um, as I said, it's really just a, a cool way to customize these sorts of things. Uh, if you want to keep them, you can certainly make them gifts for someone who is a, a Star Wars fan. All right, again, if you have any questions, feel free to contact me here at my channel. I'm going to put it now up a list of just uh, supplies that I use for this uh, particular project. Um, feel free, again, to contact me at my email or leave a comment here. Thanks again for watching. I always appreciate uh, that you do so. And I'm not sure what my next project is going to be, but, um, uh, you know, there's one just around the corner. Uh, so I will see you then, and take care. Thanks again.